I think I'm on. All right. Let me know if you can hear me. All right, you can hear me? Okay. The The chat disappeared from my little, uh, what is it, like studio thing? I don't know where it went. We'll see if more people come in, but I don't know. <laughs> it should still be up after, so if anyone wants to watch it later, they can. Well, what cursed art am I drawing? That's... An interesting question. We'll have to see. I found a, let's see. She went up. I found a character name generator. So I'm just gonna like pick two and then see what I come up with. It's delayed a little bit. All right, maybe I'll just start now. All right, so I finally found a generator. It took me forever to find one. I don't know why. It feels like it should have been simple. But I finally found one. So let's see what we get. Hopefully I know who they are. Oh, I kind of know who those are. Well, I know who Angelica is. That's interesting, all right. <laughs> See if I can, yep, okay, it goes in there. Good. This will be very interesting. I could do more than two, if you guys want me to do more than two. Oh, let's see. Oh, I barely remember that show, it was a long time ago. Oh, you did find the burrito. Oh, wait, why doesn't Grubhub let you do it? That's weird. It, there's always a catch. <laughs> so annoying. Uh, I'll just combine these layers. Let's see, where is it? Of course, now that I'm on stream, I'm going to forget where everything is, I bet. I've never streamed before. 
I actually figured out how to do it today, which is interesting. In case you were wondering, you need to wait 24 hours, like, from activating it to when you can actually do it. So, I don't know, with YouTube, probably with other things, too. You have to be prepared a few days in advance. All right, let's see. Hopefully my computer doesn't give out, because it has been being annoying. Um, but, yeah, I have a laptop, and I'm running a Cintiq 22 HD off of it. So, you know, not ideal. It works. All right, let's see. Let's hope it works. And this is Clip Studio Paint, in case you were wondering. Um, yeah, it's a really good illustration program. Um, Photoshop is good, too. I mean, but you have to pay for Photoshop, the Creative Cloud, every month. And this is like a one-time purchase. And it actually does go on sale. It's I think it's around like 200 I got the... There's... Pro and EX, and I think I have EX, which is, I got just got the highest version. Um, yeah, because why not? Um, and yeah, it goes on sale like a few times, at least a few times a year for like, and I got it when it was like 50% off. So it's only like 150, 60, and that's like a lifetime payment. So it's, it's worth it. It's a very good illustration program. It's probably my favorite. Procreate is also really good, too. Um, but, yeah, this is on the, the computer, so, you know, you have more. I mean, I, I've seen people do a lot of stuff with Procreate. Just dep depends on what you want to do, I guess. But I'd say the, the closest thing to it might be, as far as I know, might be Procreate. There's a lot of drawing stuff out there, though. The cool thing about this, though, um, Clip Studio, is that you can animate in it. Um, I think it's better than Photoshop for that, because Photoshop will, like, close out if you have, like, 10 seconds or more. It'll start me messing up and freezing and stuff, but this, I think, can handle more than that. Um, yeah, it has a lot of nice brushes, and you can actually make comics in it, which is one of the big reasons why I got it. It has, like, a whole setup for that, because it's actually um, a Japanese program, so it's, like, centered around manga. I think that's originally why... It was created. So, yeah. If you want to make comics, especially manga, very nice program. Okay, let's see. How do I want to do this? I'll start with a head. Uh, yeah, comics. <laughs> yeah, I do want to make more comics. I made one. It's on my, um, what is it, webtoon? Um, yeah, I got, I, I mean, it was rough. I had to figure out how to do it better, but I at least got, I got, like, the basic stuff down doing that. Um, but yeah, if you've ever seen, um, the manga Made in Abyss, I really like that style. I really want to do something, like, in that style, more like grayscale. Um, I think he, the author does it in Photoshop. Um, but yeah, it looks really cool. Like, that level of detail, super cool. Let's see. Um, what direction do I want the head to face? Let's do this. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, and th this is already cursed right off the bat. I know when I was playing with it a little more, like, yesterday... They weren't that cursed, but this is this kind of is cursed, so. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, opacity looks kind of high. Mm, whatever. I'm probably drawing too rough. What are you saying on there? Yeah, Instagram, yeah. I mean, YouTube does have uh, let you go whenever. Um, but I don't know if it let you share the screen doing that. At least as far as I could see, it might. I just didn't look into it enough, but I have, what is it? Um, OBS Studio, I think. The S might stand for studio, I don't know. Um, that I do it through that. It's actually not that hard. I mean, it took, like, an hour maybe to figure out how to do it good, but it's not really that hard, and you can share the screen. So I didn't feel like showing my face, because why? What's the point? 
I don't, I, if you want to see what I, who is it, two people, if you want to see what I look like, I know one of you already does, it's on my, my face is on my Instagram, like, far down, but I have shorter hair now, so, yeah, it's, it's not that interesting, uh, hmm, I'll do the, I'm taking forever to draw, I'm sorry, I'm actually pretty fast with it, um, I guess I'll give her the head, the weird head, um, in the ears. Yeah, I don't usually draw this rough, I think, you know, whatever. I do tend to draw kind of, or like hold the pencil kind of, it's not a pencil, but hold the, the utensil kind of um, hard, I guess. I don't know why. This line art pencil that I'm using right now, I downloaded it from the, the assets library. Club Studio Paint is a good assets library. I mean, there's some stuff that you have to pay for, but a lot of it is free. A lot of people put, like, stuff out there. Like, um, there's so much stuff for, like, manga, too. Like, stamps and stuff you can use. Like, if you want those fancy shoujo effects in there. I found some of those. Um, the lines and stuff. And Photoshop has a lot of those too. The thing about this though is that you can make a layer that's just one kind of um, screen tone. And then you can change it and just color wherever you want. It, it's just really easy to do. For, like Photoshop has its own brush that's a screen tone. So if you like go over it again with the same brush, it'll like double it over versus this won't. I'm sure you can find a brush that doesn't do that, though. I know there's lots of brushes. <laughs> no MS Paint. <laughs> Never. I don't think I've ever really drawn an MS Paint. I drew in Flash before I drew an MS Paint. Uh, yeah, I actually used to draw in Adobe Flash when it was called Flash. It's CS6, I think. Ugh. <laughs> It does look like Jerry, uh, Evil Jerry. I barely remember that show. I think it, it was kind of cursed, I think. As far as I remember, I don't really know. It's an old show. I was, like, just young enough to sort to see these shows. As far as I remember. So I make the head bigger. Um, let's see, I guess I'll do the body, too. I like give her the little fat body. Is it a her or he? I don't know if it is. Who knows? I guess I'll hold the dress out about that. No neck. Why have a neck? And the Rugrats were a big thing, weren't they? Back in, what was it, the 90s? Oh, you had to build it yourself? That's annoying. What's in it? Was there like a specific th amount of things that needed to be in there? And you just like manually did it? Yeah, you know what? It's fine. Let's see. Oh, wow, that's not right. All right. Nope. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, where's the eraser? Here it is. And that's too small. That's better. Mm. 
Alright. Bye to this arm. Uh. Yeah, that sounds good. That's kind of what I already put in. I don't really get burritos, I get the bowl. That's kind of what I already put in mine. Uh, what do I, I put like all the salsas except like the the really spicy one. The really spicy one, I mean, I, I like spicy food, but when it's that spicy, at least, well, to me, it's pretty spicy. I don't know. Maybe I'm not, I think I have a pretty good tolerance for it, though. Because I like, like, buffalo and stuff. But anyway, I like it when it has flavor and it's not overpowering. But if it's, like, overpowering and it's all you taste and it just burns, no. <laughs> it's not fun to eat. Oh, that arm is weird. Oh, well. It's cursed already. It's fine. That's what you tell yourself. It's fine. That dress doesn't look right, but... Nope. Never mind. I don't like it. Carnitas. Yeah. Yeah, they put, like, spice on pretty much everything, I realized. Basically everything. I mean, they're called Chipotle, so I'm not surprised. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> I had to make it look like she's holding it. Uh, I could just sort of use that pose. It's already there. Uh, I don't know. Which way is she? Ah, she's going this way, so... This way. How does it look? It's a different angle. It's a weird, it's actually a weird dress when you think about it. Just the way it is in that picture is kind of strange. Good enough. I'll take it. I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> the arms, though. The arms. If you saw the, the reel or whatever, the, the video of Mia that I put up, the, the arms. You saw me adjusting the arms a bunch of times. <laughs> sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. And the face, too. Sometimes I mess up the face. That's why I used to not draw people for a long time, because I mess up their face so bad. And I don't really even draw realistic people, because always, uh, it always looks really weird. They're not- people are hard, though. Good enough. I think it's a known fact that people are hard to draw. Especially then when it's their entire body. I'll just do a random zigzag. They kind of both have the same energy. <laughs> Happy accents, yeah? Yeah, I guess. They actually do have the same energy. They're kind of mean. At least the the shorter mouse and her. Let's see what I got. Uh, I'll do the, like, a bigger version of the, the mouse's eyes. Or a rat. I honestly don't remember what he is. I think he's a, he looks like a mouse. Or not, you know what, teeth. I'll do teeth. <laughs> Banky. Yeah, 
Yeah, is that his name, Pinky? I didn't, like I said, I barely saw that show. That might have been one of the shows that was too weird for me to watch or something. I didn't say that, my, my parents. There were some, some strange shows on, I think it, it was on Nick, right? There were some strange shows on there. That I never watched, and I probably would watch now. It's a cartoon, you can do anything you want. <laughs> Your dad liked it? Yeah, maybe I should watch some of it. Oh, that's scary. Alright, wow. Oh, yeah, Ren and Snee. Yeah, it does remind me of that. I didn't really watch much of that either. But, yeah. I think, um... What was it? Steven Hillenberg might have worked on that. One of those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd probably like it now. <laughs> I should probably watch it. Oh, you know what? The hair. Hmm, how do I do the hair? Because the, the ears are where the hair and the pigtails go. Hmm. How do I make it look actually good? Let's see, I'll just put it higher up. Yeah, it's all about the silhouette. If you're not, don't know much about character design, the silhouette is really important. And that's not a good one. The silhouette is really important because you can recognize the character from far away. So like if you look up silhouettes of popular characters, you'll see that you can pretty much, even if it's the silhouette, you can tell who it is. I mean, obviously, it's not just the shape that makes them identifiable, but that's a good way to do it, is to start with that. Or maybe not even start with it, end with it, I guess. Because you can have a character you want to look a certain way, and then you can just, like, exaggerate the shapes. You start with sh simple shapes, too, like circles or triangles or whatever, and kind of build off of that. Looks weird. Her hair is strange. It kind of it doesn't look really like hair. I'll just do like a weird little one. Like that. Maybe. Or maybe like a shorter blocky version. Evil, evil female Pikachu, yeah. Kinda. <laughs> no whiskers. Oh, that's interesting. They don't have whiskers. I'll add some. Why not? What else? Oh, the shoes. I like the rat feet, though. Um... Yeah. Alright, let's go with that. Let's put them in a group. Where is it? There it is. Let's move it to the middle. And this is the fun part. Or I guess not. I don't know if it's fun. But you can, when you have a sketch, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff to it, like destroy it. I mean, you want to kind of duplicate it before you destroy it, but make it different sizes. And if it gets pixely, it doesn't really matter, as long as you can see what it is, because you're just going to do the final over it. So you can like kind of break it apart. And if you want to move like the arm, you can move it, um, break it off and move it, and then go back over it a little bit and it won't matter because 
it's not the final one. Yeah, and I like to use the pencil. I mean, I like to use the texture. What do you mean by texture? Like lines on the dress and stuff or like a brush? I didn't add the bows. Oops. Probably do that. Repetitive patterns. Mm. I don't know how to do that in this. I think you can. There's a lot of texture brushes. So I can find one that looks cool. Yeah, I like to add texture. That's more of a final thing. I'll get there. But yeah, I'm a repetitive pattern. I'm sure you can do it in this. I haven't done it in this, but I th if you have oh. Illustrator or Photoshop, it's probably easier to do it in there. I know Illustrator is relatively easy to do it if you want to make like a repetitive pattern. You can probably also find like um, a free image that you can use for a repetitive pattern or um, a brush from the asset store that's one. I mean, it's not original, but, you know, as long as they let you use it, always make sure it's free use. And it can be free use, but they want you to cite where you got it from or cite their website, like wherever you post it or use it, like in the credits of something. Always double check so you don't get in trouble. Copyright is annoying. Let's see what kind of line I want to do. Do I want to do pencil? Or do I want to do something else? I do like the G pen, but I you know, I can use the G pen. Sometimes it looks kind of artificial, but it depends, I guess, on how you use it. The less lines you make, the better. I'm not going for perfection here. The G pen is nice because it has a big range of um, size, which I use too much right there. <laughs> um, where you don't have to press like a, a lot or like barely at all. So I know, I think a lot of people use it for like final lines. I'm using like the textured one because I always like some texture. I have yet to find a brush that has perfect texture that I want. Oh, you got copyrighted? Did you? <laughs> That's not fun. For what? And now I fan art is kind of the thing where it's it's nice if you cite, you know, where it's from. I don't know if you necessarily have to, you probably should. But I think people generally know it's fan art. And it's kind of free advertising. As long as you don't, like, directly copy something. I mean, why? Just don't. Don't directly copy things. It's no fun. Try to challenge yourself. Oh, on Etsy? Was it for BTS? It's a, depending on... You always have to look up. There's always annoying rules on... Like, how much you can change it and whatnot. Like, if you were to... I know, like, on YouTube, I know people make, like, music videos for stuff. And I think it is all, like... I don't think it really gets taken down. Unless you... If you post, like, repost a song without permission. Just the song by itself. I know it'll get... Flagged or taken down. Um, but if it's, like, if you animate over it... You might be okay. I know I want to do that too. But if for some reason you wanted to like monetize it, 
or use it for like or enter it in like a festival or something. You definitely would have to get rights for that. I'm not, I don't know about monetization. I think that might be. Yeah, I know. Well, I know they they want you to have permission if you're gonna make money off of it. But yeah, definitely a festival. I mean, if you're gonna put a lot of this is what I was kind of thinking of. If you're gonna put a lot of work into seriously animating to a piece of music, just might as well just try to get the rights to it. If it, I don't know how much it would be though. I can't say I really know. But then you can at least use it for other things, you know, like uh, if you wanted to enter it in a festival. I mean, you could use the the animation without the audio in other stuff, I'm sure. I mean, yeah, because it's your own. But the audio, obviously, nope. But yeah, like sampling music, I, I'm not, I haven't looked up too much about like to what degree that's okay and stuff because I know people do it. They sample music and sounds from other places and it make music out of it. But it's like changed quite a bit. I don't know. I, it might technically be a problem, but you know. Ah, that's annoying. Yeah, copyright. There was actually a video that showed up. I think it was Dan Fan. Um, shout out to Dan Fan. Um, I think she posted a video a few days ago about if copyright helps or hurts artists. And I didn't watch it yet, but I kind of want to. Because, yeah, yeah, I think it's both. Obviously, you don't want your stuff taken. But also, if you want to... Let's say, like, animate a music video or something. To something, just for fun. You know, and post it on YouTube. Why not? But, yeah. Or fan art. Like, I know, at least in Japan, the, the whole fan art thing, or making comics and actually selling them. Um, what are they? They're called doujins. Making them um, from an existing property. And selling them, I know people do that a lot, and I think, at least from what I've heard, it's kind of like free advertising. So they don't, it's not really that big of a deal, but technically illegal though. Um, but yeah, here, I don't know, <laughs> I don't think that would work that good. But yeah, it is, it is free advertising. But at the same time, do you want people making like a lot of money off of your stuff like that? I don't know, because... Yeah, ultimately, I think at least it would bring people to your product while also showcasing the other artist's um, ability. So, I don't know. At least, let's say if I made something that people wanted to make that stuff off of, I wouldn't really care. Because, I mean, yeah, if you like it that much to make an actual comic from it, it's great. <laughs> Why does this morph look good though? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, I know when I posted on Redbubble, I did Pokemon. I mean, I drew them myself. I didn't use like a picture from them anywhere. But obviously, they don't belong to me. Um, and it like had to check them. I think it took like 24 hours and it said it was okay. I don't know. <laughs> Because I know, I mean, that's like half of the stuff that's theirs, just from existing things. Because, you know, that's what sells. At first, at least, until you get like a following enough where people like, you know, your stuff. It, it just depends. But that's kind of how you get people to... These lines are too big. Get people to look at your stuff for, at first, I guess. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess if you're not making that much money off of it, it's probably not a big deal. But once you start making, like, a lot, then it probably gets worse. But, yeah. I'm just just talking kind of randomly here. I don't really know that much about it. I've researched a little bit, but not just f for stuff that I've had to make. Um, but, yeah. It's complicated. 
It's complicated. I know the the H3, shout out to them because I like them too. Um, H3 Podcasts has that whole thing going on. And they, they had that whole lawsuit with copyright stuff. And yeah, I mean, copyright is a interesting thing on the internet. It's a, it can be, it has a lot of gray areas. So especially with, yeah, like if you're reviewing videos, if that's your channel, you obviously should show some of the video because, like, no one's going to want to sit there and just hear you talk without showing what you're talking about, at least a little. And it's, like I said, free advertising. But obviously you don't want to show the whole thing, because what's the point of people going and watching it? And I think what a lot of people do is they they change it a little bit, like they reverse it horizontally, um, flip it. So it's not, it's different when they show it on their video. Where is it? Oh, it moved. It moved. It was on the other side. I think it was, unless I just haven't used this in enough time. Oh, what's that? Where's the reset? There's the reset. Yeah, the, the longest part might be the line art, just because you kind of want it to look nice. You have to hit undo a lot. It's annoying. Yeah, the sketch sometimes can take a long time too, though, because you're trying to figure out what to do. But the line art is also annoying. Yeah, I don't know. It really depends. Yeah, imitation is the highest form of it is. It is. Especially with like the longer the work, like the like a doujinshi, the whole comic. If you want to make a whole manga, I mean it's they're usually kind of short, but if you want to make a whole comic off of someone else's work, you have to like it a lot. Or at least see the value in making and selling something off of it. And at least from what I've heard, that's how a lot of manga artists kind of start off. So they kind of get noticed like that. Because people are more apt to look up something that already exists that's popular than something that's new. Um, that they made that doesn't have a big following yet. Makes sense. Yeah, honest, honestly, yeah. Let people do that stuff, but obviously if you're going to make like an entire big business off of it, that's not a good idea. But try to make your own stuff. Fan art is always nice, though. And what would we do if there was no fan art, honestly? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. I'll go with that. Let's do the colors. I'm just gonna take from these pictures. Fan art, yeah, fan art is good. It is. Uh, oh, what am I doing? See, I told you I'd forget how to do everything. Let's, what color should the skin be? Let's do both. There's a line right there, so might as well do both. You know what? No. I'm gonna be fancy and do the full color thing first. Did you know? I didn't even know what um, blending modes were until like a year ago. If you know what those are, it's pretty sad. <laughs> it's pretty sad. I love blending modes. 
I, I mean, I kind of got similar effects with just, like, messing with the colors, but nowhere near as polished. Color Dodge is my favorite. I think Ross, Ross Tran is, like, the Color Dodge king. Shout out to him, too. His art is amazing. Like, godly amazing. I don't know. I, I just don't know how. It's great, though. Still haven't mastered color dodge to that degree. It won't, really depends on what I'm doing, though. Sometimes when I use it, it looks bad. Sometimes it looks fine. You don't want to use a lot of it, though. It's kind of just like last touch-up highlights. Blending modes. If you see where my mouse is, there's all these. And I'll show you towards the end of this. It's kind of like the last step. Um... They can make things darker or lighter, so let's say you have black on another layer. Instead of making a shadow for each color, like a darker color for each color to make a shadow, you would, um, you could I mean, black isn't necessarily the best to use, but you could use, like, black on another layer, put the shadows where you want, change it to multiply is what people usually put a shadow on, and then it will combine the black with the color underneath and make that, um, darker color. So it kind of like combines the whatever's on top with whatever's underneath and in different ways depending on what um, mode you set it on. So you can make it kind of look like a highlight, um, like really bright. I think it kind of mimics some like camera stuff, like overexposure and stuff, so it'll get really bright. So if you use it too much, it will hurt your eyes really bad to look at. It'll hurt. Let's see. It is very cool. Alright, nice. And I upped the area or the color margin, so there's no line. Took me forever to figure that out, too. Oh. Oh. It's not what I wanted to do. It was the eraser. I was trying to use the eraser. Nope. Yes, it is. It really is. It really is. Um, yeah, that's that's actually a weird skin color. I know it's like orange, like cr like a dark creamsicle. Interesting. It might just be the picture. I don't know. It is evil. <laughs> Why am I on that that brush? Alright, so here's the trick. Alpha lock. If you don't know what alpha lock is, is it doing it? Nope. Oh, okay. There, alpha lock. It doesn't color out. No, I guess white isn't a good example of that. Do red. Alpha lock. You can't draw on the the transparent pixels. And then clipping mask is like that, but on a different layer. So yeah, that you can put a different color on each layer. And what I like about Clip Studio, I know other programs do this too, but let's see. If you change the color here, you don't want it this color, do convert to drawing color, and it changes it. The, all of what's on that um, layer, the entire layer. So if you have multiple colors on a layer, it will change them all to that. But I'm, I'm sure there's a way to do one kind, but it's probably just easier to do that. So let's say you were designing um, outfits for a character. You had them on different layers and you want had each color on its own layer. You wanted to change the color. You can do it. And I've also seen um, with the timeline, the an which is down here, for animation, you can put, um, it's not really animation, but you can put um, different outfits on different, in different animation folders. Um, and then you can, like, have the, the character's body underneath and then just, like, scroll through the outfits. So you can just 
have the same character, draw different outfits on them, and it's kind of like a fast way to see what all their different outfits look like. Which I kind of want to do. Which will happen eventually. And yeah, naming your layers is always easy too. Which I always forget to do. Uh, this is taking me longer than I want it to. But yeah. Should, you don't necessarily have to if it's small. Like this is small. But it helps instead of having to click the eye off and on all the time. Yeah, the fits, yeah. Yep, let's see. Uh, you know what, actually the tail of, the, of Pinky is kind of the same color, so I'm just going to leave it that color. I'll do the shirt now. Yeah, I'm no by no means a master of this or really any program. I kind of know what I need to to make something, but... Yeah, I need to learn more. But I know most of the basic things. Once you know one, it's you kind of know a lot of them. Yep. Let's do the white. Never make any... Oh, this is actually pure white. Never make anything pure white. In case you want to add a highlight on it. Because then you can actually see the highlight and never make, or don't usually make anything pure black. I know I made the line pure black, but I know I use, I call it like Pokemon gray because a lot of the, the black in quotes that they use on Pokemon is like here. It's like that. It's like a dark gray. It's like a specific gray. Yeah, so then you can add, um, or so, like, if the lines are black, you can see the lines. It looks weird if you can't. <laughs> not in, not in, oh, jeez. <laughs> Is her hair actually that color? You know, well, I'll make it that color. It, it seems kind of dark. I don't know, does it look dark? Let me see. Where's my... Angelica, I'll just search another image. Rugrats. Yeah, it's lighter. I guess. I'll just... Let's see, make it... Like that. Maybe. Another thing I'm bad at is oh, another thing I'm bad at is color because yeah, it's kind of hard to tell when it's actually color, but the hues might all be the same. Like the the darkness or lightness might all be the same and you want them different, especially when like designing a character, you want to keep checking that. So, cuz you kind of, like, if you know to look for it, you kind of notice it when it's in color. But once you, like, change it to black and white, you notice it a lot. And you kind of subconsciously notice it in color. And a lot of people will probably say it looks kind of off, and I don't really know why. And it might be one of the reasons why. And, uh-oh. Let's move that above. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing about this, at least, because I know, at least as far as I know in Procreate, you have to change the saturation for each layer. So you have to combine all the layers and add the set, change the saturation on there. But on here, you can make a new layer, where is it? Um, correction layer. Hue saturation, where is it? Oh, it's on my other screen. I have two. Uh, yeah, bring the saturation all the way down. 
and then it will do it when whatever is below it. So you can move it around and turn it off and on really quick to see. So, um, yeah, so see how the hair is kind of similar to the skin. So, let's see. Are they on the same layer? Did I put them on the same layer? Oops, I think I did. Uh oh. Well, anyway, yeah, so I had to make it, what, darker? Um, or lighter, either one. But yeah, see what I mean? It's annoying. Where's the eraser? At least for me, it's annoying. It's You can correct it, but it's still annoying. And also just like figuring out what colors go good with what I'm also bad at. <laughs> Most of the time, sometimes I, I kind of get it. But other times it's like, yeah. <laughs> And that's one of the things I need to fix for my thesis film for n next year. What, what the heck did I do? Oh, well, there's a line there I don't need. Um, one of the things I need to fix for my thesis film, because the colors are a little weird. Uh, let's see, let's do this again. Color wheel. <laughs> yeah. Do need one. I don't know if there's a... Yeah, no, I don't see it in here. There's a, Adobe Color is a good site for that. Because um, you can kind of, like, make color palettes on there. And it's free. Free. Uh, so you can kind of make color palettes on there. And it's just easy to... Yeah, no, see that? Nope. Lighter? I think I want to go lighter. Even if it's not the exact color. Let's see. Or do I want to go darker? Nope. Maybe darker. Yeah. Let's see what color that is. Yeah, that's sim that's good enough. That's kind of similar. Yep. Yeah, some people start in grayscale and then there's like a mode called color. And you kind of it matches the the saturation, this is the saturation, like how dark or light, it matches that when you put the color on top of it, which you can do. The good thing about starting with, there's whole videos on it, I'm kind of saying what they said. The good thing about starting with color is that, you know, there's some things that adding in, like starting with color is good for. Like if you want it to do little things with color, like add color in certain areas or play with it more, it's easier to do it. I mean, you can. Oh, now it's similar to the purple. Hmm. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, the approach I would take at least is if I wanted to start in grayscale, which I have done a few times. If I wanted to start in grayscale, um, I would do the color mode on top, and then I would kind of just pretend that it was in color all along. Because if you just if you only just do the color mode on top, sometimes it'll look kind of artificial, um, which is not uh, unless you want it to, is not usually what you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of similar, but you know what? It's good. You don't notice it quite yet. Yeah, see, it looks it looks good like this. But, like, you can kind of tell if it's really close, you can kind of tell in color. If you, especially if you know what to look for. But, like I said, if you don't, you, it's kind of subconscious. You're like, it looks a little weird. Kind of boring, I guess. Or flat. What else? Oh, good. Yes, I do have to make a film for senior year. That's what I have to work on. Not senior, second year. That's what I have to work on. 
So I have to do stuff this summer. I basically have to get everything ready to animate it. Because that's ideally what you want. Is to just animate it. Finish it. In that year. Because otherwise... You might be behind and have to stay a third year, which a lot of people do. Um, and there's nothing really wrong with it. It just depends. I mean, it, aside from it's money. More money. Because at least... Ooh. From what I heard, a lot of the MFA um, animation programs are already three years anyway. The one I'm at is two, so it's already a short one to begin with. In the nose. Yeah, it looks good. Yep. It's already... Yeah, I'll do it. I don't think I really have to. Good length, yeah. Yeah, so I guess from here, I've seen people do it a bunch of different ways. You could do, like I said, the multiply. Sometimes they can look kind of artificial, too, though. Um, especially if you use black. You don't always want to use just black for shadows. Let's say, like, your light source is gold. You could use, like, dark gold um, for that, for the shadow. Um, or you could do it the long way. And... Do it yourself. And you don't always want to do it directly in the same spot. You want to either go to the side somewhere and do it. Because um, it's just more interesting. And now I have to find out what brush to use. Another thing I've had a problem with is finding the perfect brush to um, do this. Gouache was good when I use it. The blending in um, Clip Studio Paint is really good. Obviously, yeah, I'll use this. The Depending on what brush you use, it depends, but the blending is like probably the best I've seen in a digital program. And I hate how I did that. <laughs> and you don't always at least what I learned from tutorials, you don't always want to do just a uh, soft outline on everything because it can look kind of gross. Unless your lighting is just really soft. And also figure out where your light source is. I just, which sometimes I forget to do. And I kind of just do it and then it looks a little weird. And obviously it depends on how much you... Um, like what style you want to do if you want like the the cell style of it just align or you want to blend it a little bit personally i like it <laughs> personally i like it a little bit of both sharp and not sharp soft <laughs> that's it but it obviously depends and a lot of people that have really nice, um, almost like 3D-ish um, end styles, like the way it looks at the end, it starts out like a line kind of like this. And it's just the shading that really, the shading and the highlights that do it, that make it look 3D. It's pretty crazy. So that that is definitely the most important part to make it look really interesting, I'd say, in terms of like how much volume it has and stuff. 
because you can make it look really flat, which mine kind of do more than I want them to, or really um, nice and like th almost like 3D or realistic. Yeah, and the shadows, I used to be really bad at them, but I kind of just taught myself how to do them. The best thing to do them, if you want to, if you're not good at them and you want to get better, is to just look at objects in real life, draw them, do some life drawing. Because, I mean, you can look at, I mean, yeah, you can look at pictures and stuff online, too, and kind of practice copying the lighting from that. But also still life will help you with how it actually looks, because sometimes pictures can distort things. But yeah, do both of those, and then eventually it kind of will just come to you. But obviously, you know, if you have like a weird lighting source, and you even like professional people, they still don't know exactly... <laughs> draw your plushies. Exactly how the light should hit, especially if it's like weird lighting, so you find a reference that looks like that, and kind of go off of that. If anyone says that using reference is bad, don't listen to them. <laughs> Everyone uses reference. Uh, yeah. And sometimes I like to add some, like, patches of red in there to kind of make the skin more interesting. Or whatever color, depending on the skin color, will make it look more like it's alive. Something. Some form of red, usually, because red skin has red in it, because there's blood in it. If it doesn't, if you can put, like, if you have, like, a vampire or something, you can put, like, green or blue, I guess. <laughs> or gray. Or someone that looks dead. Mm-hmm. I can almost see the shadow right here, too, now that this is shaded. I don't know if you can see that. It almost looks like it's already shaded. Oh, what is this? The red. It's an optical illusion. <laughs> A vampire cook. <laughs> Yeah, some of his outfits kind of already have that vibe, don't they? Have they ever done, like, a vampire theme anything? Because if they haven't, they should. You know what? The, those reds are almost the same color. It's kind of funny. I could have put them on the same layer, probably. Don't be afraid to make your shadows dark, too. Because I sometimes am, and I, why am I doing it? I sometimes am, and it looks kind of bad if they're not dark enough. You can even add, like, another color to darken it more, just on the edges, like I am right now. Because if it's too soft, it looks kind of weird. Kind of flat. And you, if you don't want it to look flat, it's not good.
guess I have to look at it now. Oh. Yeah, no, yeah. I see it. Yeah, it's funny because I used to have like an actual phobia of vampires like when I was little. Like even looking in like those, I don't know, even know if they still really have them. But those like oriental trading Halloween magazines when they had like all the stuff in there. Even looking at the vampire teeth in there, like I would have nightmares just from seeing a picture of them. <laughs> but I don't know, I just kind of got over it. I don't know why, maybe it's all the vampire anime that came out. I kind of like vampires now. No, not kind of. I do. I do like them now. They're pretty cool. There was a lot of a lot of good content there. I actually thought of something that I could have vampires in. Don't know when I'll ever get to make it, but potentially like a comic or something. I have a story I could do, but when do I have time? I don't know. <laughs> Eventually. There's a few actually decent comic ideas. Well, I think they're decent. I hope they are. Um, comic ideas I have. I really won't get to them for at least like a year or two. <laughs> we'll see. How flat do I want the hair to look? It looks kind of flat already. The hair is always annoying. That's all right, I guess. But the, the hair is... I kind of mess up. I do it good when it's like a painting without lines. But when it has lines, it's, I don't know, it messes me up. And also with this, like the whole blending modes and like final touch-ups and stuff, you, the, the lighting can be like seriously altered. So as long as you, you just want to get like the basic shadows. That doesn't look right. You just want to get like the basic shadows and highlights and you can like expand upon it later. Which I finally found out that I could do. Uh, yes, uh, too many tasks, definitely. Because you think of ideas and then they kind of sit somewhere because you don't have time to make them and so if you have a story too usually i kind of either see one thing or something and make up a story i like an entire story from just one idea but it's not enough of an idea to really like make an entire thing out of so you kind of have to develop it more so i think a lot of the the ideas i have still need that like final development because otherwise it's just like you have one concept and that's about it works for short things sometimes but not for like long things like if you have a good idea like i don't know what's an example all right what was the idea i had like a steampunk thing with vampires is kind of one thing i thought of but that in itself, I mean, there's a lot you can do with that. But, um, yeah, that in itself is not enough. You need more, which I do have more, but you need to actually make up the story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ugh, yeah, there's always so much to do. Mm, is that it? I think so. Well, uh, now let's go back and do... Highlights. Yay. Not as it doesn't take as long. You don't want to add highlights to everything, which I used to do. You don't need it. Um, some things. Like the skin kind of if it's like hitting the light right like straight on. Shiny objects, yes. Um I don't know, the, the ear is kind of transparent. 
so sure. I <laughs> daydream, yeah. I get story ideas a lot. It's just whether they're good or not is the the thing. Yeah, I don't. You don't really need highlights on the clothes because they're kind of matte. They don't really have like a slick surface. The first, yeah, I guess you could. It's kind of hard to see. Um, uh, this line bothers me. I don't like it. I'm going to erase it if I can. Let's go by line. Oh, and it looks disgusting underneath. <sighs> Where is it? Nope. Oh, here. Yes. Dang it. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah. Uh oh. I took off the thing. Oh, wait, no, it's clipped. Never mind. I don't really think I need to do the alpha lock. But I did it. Now let's see. Contour the cheeks. Yeah, all right. I don't know how much contour I can add. Why does that look weird? <laughs> That's better. Mm, what else? Uh, the hair. And the eyes too. Where's the... Oh, I didn't add shadows to the bow. Oops. Where is it? <laughs> I'm so bad at finding them. Not dark enough. That's too dark. Well, speaking of vampires, um, there's a good show, a good anime that's airing right now called Mars Red. It's interesting. I'm still kind of confused about what exactly is happening. And I don't know, it's just... Maybe I need to rewatch some of it, but it's just, it has a really cool, what do you call it, editing style, I guess. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of a Shaft anime, but it's, I think it's Signal MD did it, but it kind of has like a Shaft um, quality to it, like quick cuts and stuff. Uh, it's weird, and I like it. Very interesting. There's a lot of vampire stuff recently. I know, I know Heather, you know. You know I love Seraph of the End. I'm obsessed with that one. Obsessed. It's probably the most recent thing I'm obsessed with. I think. As far as I can think. Yeah. I haven't watched a show that quick in a long time. Really liked it. And yeah, just don't just watch the show, read the manga too. It's kind of interesting to see, um, 
I don't know if they're going to make a season three, by the way. I hope they do. It's Wit Studio, so I mean, or it was Wit Studio. It would be great if they did, but you never know. Oh, your burrito's there. Ooh. Yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, it's interesting to see, because I went on the, my anime list and I looked at the manga and the anime for that. And saw the reviews. Um, and it's interesting. There's like a whole different set of people that looks at each one. Because uh, most people tend to go for the anime, I think. Um, just because animation is, you know, it holds your attention more, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it's debatable what animation is. I don't know if I, should I say this? I don't know. The superior medium. I don't know. It, or it has the potential to be the superior medium. Obviously, certain things do better in certain mediums, but animation you have, well, the animation you have audio. Um, you got the movement, the look, the audio. You can do, in theory, anything you want. Obviously, that doesn't happen, but yeah, so in theory, it should be good, but it's. At least the thing I see with with anime and even like other movies and stuff based off of books and like print media um, is that they just feel kind of flat. Not necessarily bad. Like they can adapt it pretty much exactly how it is, but it still feels kind of flat. Um, I don't know. I it's maybe it's because they don't fully take advantage of the fact that it's animated because I've seen things where that do and it stands out um, obviously that's not the people that make it, it's probably not their fault I'm not blaming anyone I'm just saying it's interesting to see um, yeah and I don't have an answer for exactly how you should fix that obviously there's a reason why that happens um, but yeah but anyway, what I was saying was that it's interesting to see the different kinds of people that will read the manga versus watch the anime. Because a lot of people... <laughs> Paw Patrol! Um, the actual animation of Paw Patrol is actually good. Like, I looked at it yesterday. Okay, it's good. It just looks... Bland? The CG? Not bad, though. I'm mean, obviously not bad. It just has, like, the normal CG look. Which isn't bad, but like I was saying yesterday, <laughs> diversity is always good. Especially with CG. You know, we need more diverse looks. Mitchells versus Machines. Watch that if you haven't watched that already. Very nice looking CG. I am a, obsessed with 2D. I, I will always favor 2D. That's my opinion. Um, and I like 3D that combines 2D. It's really cool. To experiment with that stuff. But yeah, I like 3D too. Um, but yeah, I, it's just a personal preference when it comes to 2D versus 3D. Uh, I think a lot of people th think that 3D is an upgrade from 2D, and that's not the case. It always bothers me when people say that. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that plane show. It bothers me when people say that, because it's, it's just like a branching off. It's not... An upgrade. They're often used together, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, at least in anime, what what seems to work is when 3D is in the backgrounds, not when it's on characters. Like, I was talking to one of the people in my class about this, like, a few times, because they do 3D, and we couldn't really figure out why exactly it just looked weird in anime when it was on characters, the 3D. I don't know if it, I don't know if the frame rate is different or what. It's like, I don't know. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about it. But yeah, it, like in Attack on Titan, the really dynamic fight scenes, if you stop and look, you can tell a lot of the backgrounds are 3D because those camera movements are way easier to do in 3D. I mean, you don't really even want to do them in 2D, honestly. It just take too long. Um... To draw, redraw everything that many times. I mean, the characters are 2D. As far as I can tell. In the Wit Studio. Um, seasons, what, 1, 2, and 3? Uh, 
yeah, Attack on Titan. I, I didn't mind the 3D, it's fine. I mean, yeah, it does stand out. You don't want to break the immersion. Um, that's something you don't want to do. And it kind of does, no matter what, but it, it was still good. I mean, it's not like incompetent 3D. It's just... I don't know, they ha you have to find a way to make it look good together. And maybe it never will look good on characters, I don't know. It's a it's a dilemma. Someone needs to figure it out. The what is it? The spider. Um, so I'm a spider. So what? At least some of that I saw. The spider itself actually I thought it was pretty good 3D. Like it, it did kind of look like 2D, but it was in a 3D background I think. So that might have been why. I don't know. Oh yeah. Anyway, I was saying the the types of people that only watch the anime versus read the manga are, like, vastly different. Like, for Seraph of the End, um, the anime, um, a lot of people rated it when it was, like, an 8 or a 7. Some people, like, 6 or lower. They're like, this is just, like, Attack on Titan. And yeah, it's kind of, like, a basic similar plot, and Attack on Titan is not, doesn't have, like, the basic premise. I mean, the Titans are are interesting. That's kind of a newer thing, but the basic premise itself is not super original. The whole post-apocalyptic thing. Ooh, it is good. Yeah, it sounded good. The burrito. The whole post-apocalyptic thing isn't new. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff that, that has that, but, um, yeah, a lot of people that watched the anime were like, oh, this is just like Attack on Titan, but different. And the same, it being animated by the same studio is, might have been part of the reason why they said that. But then when you go to the manga, a lot of people were like, yeah, this isn't the most original idea, but I really enjoyed it. So I saw like a lot of people give it like a nine. And personally, I think that's what I would give it, the manga. The anime, I mean, the anime just follows the manga up to when the anime stops. And there's a little bit of a difference in to kind of wrap up the anime, which they kind of do a lot. Um, that differs a little bit from the manga, but not too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could, if they were to make a season, what, three, they could kind of gloss over that a bit. But yeah, it's just, I guess, well, you get a bunch of people that kind of think, kind of look at the story as a whole in the anime, like, what's there. They kind of look at that as the whole story. They're like, oh, I wish I had more character development. It's like, it's just one chunk of the story animated, so the character development is not all the way there because it's only part of the story. That's why. I don't know. So, yeah. Um, you kind of have to view it in a different way. I guess. You, can, you can't view the anime as it's necessarily its own thing. You kind of view the franchise as its own thing, which I kind of tend to do. But obviously, if you don't like reading or you don't feel like going to the manga, you know. The anime, though, I can tell you, though, um, the anime was well adapted. Because the, at least some, some of the scenes in the anime were actually m uh, better done than the manga. Like, um, uh, the manga's really good, though. But yeah, I can, you can definitely tell where, like, the directors of the anime knew what they were doing. Um, yeah, very good. Go watch it. It's underrated. It is so good. I don't know how much more it has left of the manga. It might have another arc, or it is the last arc. It's what I'm, I can tell from it. Uh, anyway, okay, this. I was <laughs> going back to this. I've already been going for an hour and a half. Maybe I'll just do this one. So we'll make it fancy. Uh, here's the... So I have the... All the shadows and highlights and colors. So now it's kind of like the finishing touches. Um, and that's where the blending modes come in. So let's see what I want to do. Hmm. Hmm. What kind of background would I put? Can change the background to maybe just the color. Simple. Like a. Yeah, that works. Um, let's see. Um, yeah. 
us. Actually, let's use a texture. This line, line art pencil actually has a nice texture. Kind of. It's kind of, <laughs> when it's really big, it looks kind of blocky. Are those numbers in there? It almost looks like there's numbers in there. Anyway, uh, let's set to multiply. We'll see what multiply does. Maybe not. Is it because it's the background? You know what? I'll make a new layer and fill that then. Maybe because it's full of opacity. Yeah, so it kind of... Yeah. Mm, eh, I don't really like that. Let's see if I have a different texture in here. I could import one, but I don't, f I don't feel like it. And that erase is great because it's just one big button it's to erase the entire layer. Uh, yeah, that works. I can do that. And let's see. It's on multiply already. It's kind of weird. Uh, let's actually change it to a different color. something uh then what all right the uh, i don't know if you can hear that but the bts has changed you <laughs> yeah they have changed you uh air rush is good for lighting because it's soft um let's see what, do, what kind of lighting orange works <laughs> Orange always works. Reddish orange is always has a nice look to it. Let's see the lighting. Hmm, what you know what? Since it's evil, why don't we do a evil lighting? Uh let's see. Set it to multiply. Let's see if that works. Yes it does. Alright, let's do uh uh, this. And it'll look weird because it's full opacity, but it'll look better later. Having it soft eraser is also nice. So you can erase it good. Well, obviously, so you can erase it. So you can erase it similar. Uh, and then let's bring it down a little bit. There, there. there's about good. Um, and then maybe erase this a little. Gotta make it look like the shape it is, um, and then that. Uh, get some of the eye there. Um, let's see. Okay, and then the lighting. Now we can do the lighting. Kind of light green. Can try or bluish green. Let's see if that <laughs> works. I don't know. Interesting. It's very interesting. I'll give it that. It's too big. It's kind of, it looks like she's in an evil lab. Dexter's lab. 
I well, I did watch some of that show. Mostly what I watched on Nick was SpongeBob. It got burnt. Oh no. Your burrito, you mean? I've never had anything that got burnt before from there. Let's see. Um, add. So here's some. Ooh. So those are blending modes. Subtract. See, it's weird. Oh, I kind of like that. You know what? I actually might add that on the other side a little bit. Color burn. It doesn't all look good. Darken. That's interesting. I kind of like darken. Add is too bright. Um, screen is usually a highlight. Kind of bright. Let's do darken. Kind of like that. Bring it down a little. Um, and then, oh yeah. I was going to add it to the other side. The stole double lighting thing I like. The double colors. It's Promare's fault. The way they did the the two. The pink and blue lights. I love it. So much. And the way they colored the lines too. Actually, it worked really good. Oh, yeah. It did look burnt. Yeah, that's that's why it's called color burn. Uh, yeah, it can look burnt if you don't um, do it. Um, what's the word? Right. I get, do it right, I guess. Um, yeah, you have to be, you have to not use too much of it. What was it? Subtract? Don't use too much of it. Oh, it looks a little weird in the shadow. Mm, yeah, whatever. Maybe I can move it a little bit. Nah, it still looks weird. Never mind. I'll still leave it though. Um, background doesn't match now, so I'll have to fix that. What else? Uh, let's add some highlight, extra highlights on there. Maybe this color. G pen. Let's go with G pen. I like adding like these really sharp lines kind of at the end. Cause it looks really cool. It stands out a lot. If you see, I add them in like, if I add like dust and stuff in the air, I'll add them on there. It might be too much for that, but it works. I don't know. I could lower the opacity a little. Mm, what else? I can't really see that. Um, I could color the lines. I kind of like the black. But let's, we can duplicate this. If you're going to make drastic changes, duplicate it in case you don't like it. Uh, hmm. Yeah, usually you just do darker of what darkest is right there. Um, and I've seen people use the airbrush because it's softer. You don't necessarily notice a difference because it's pretty dark. But it, it it does make a difference. See right there, it kind of looks nicer, I guess. It fits in more. Like, there's some art that you don't really even think about it being line art. But it is. Just because the way they color the lines, it fit, fits really well. Uh, yeah, like this. You see, sometimes though, it doesn't match good. It has to be a certain kind of dark. I think going too light, it looks weird. Um, usually darker is better, at least from what I can tell. 
yeah, see like that on the purple is too light. That works. It can really help with the lighting though. Like you can kind of see it here. Yeah, just a little bit there. That's a little better. I think I might want to go more red though for this eye. Darker. Yeah. Um, now what? Hmm, the background needs to change. Uh, yeah. Let's make it like a, this. Ow, that hurts. <laughs> um, yeah, that's bright. A little better. I don't know. Um, anyway, let's try something else. Subtract. Maybe I want it to hurt. <laughs> Much respect. Thank you. And I don't like the way that looks. It's, I thought it would be red. It's kind of red. Mm, what should I do to this? I kind of don't like that. Hmm. Maybe this. Yeah. Let's move this all the way up here. And see. Hmm. I don't know. I could add like a bright red, I guess. Maximum eye pain. And a light source, maybe. I don't know if you can hear my pen. It's kind of loud. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It might hurt, but oh well. <laughs> Sometimes it does and it looks cool. Uh, and then you can add some dodge on there. And usually you want to go real dark when you use this. Otherwise it'll look just white. It won't have the color. The more the darker it is, the more the color that you have it as it is. Oh. Hopefully my computer doesn't die. There. Save it just in case. I can't really see it. Oh, because I'm on the behind. Wow. Anyway. Oh yeah, see it can add some light on there. Let's do this. What's this? Yeah, I don't I don't need it on there. Let's just add it on her. It does look like spray paint. Oh yeah, see the color dodge can make it look like lighting. Or like I know Ross uses a lot on like hair. Like where the highlights are. Just to make it look more like a light. If you do it right, it does. It's a little noticeable on mine, but it works. Yeah, it does look like light. But what, what's underneath kind of already has to be kind of bright. Otherwise, you won't really see it good. Like, look at right here. Don't really see much. Um, yeah, and then we can add some stuff in front, maybe. And I got some dust brushes in here. I've got a lot of nice brushes in here. Ooh, maybe I'll actually be able to use the... The Minecraft glitches. And they're small, but let's make them really big. Nope. With the big ones. It looks like. Yeah, they're small. 
never mind. Kind of small. Uh, what other brushes could I use? What about this? How big does this get? Ooh. It's kind of small, though. I'll put it in the background, maybe. Let's see what, what happens when I do it. Ooh. Color dodge, see? It's very fun. Too much. I'll wait now. Again, that's good. Uh, what else? Maybe I should put a shadow. Just to make it look like she's on something. That shadow looks gross. Like this. Uh, what else? What can I put in the front? Some dust. Um, I'll just put more of those in the front. Nah, you can't see them. Um, I have dust. What else do I have? I have... Definitely not the best kind of background I've made. It works. Let's do dust and make it white. Where's my dust? I have some good dust brushes in here. You want it really random, but not like super small. Uh, where is it? I know it's in here somewhere. You just add all the things, yeah. Oh, what about these squares? Are they? Yeah, they get so. I wish they got bigger. Where is the dust brush? I know it was in here somewhere. Star splatter kind of works. But there's a specific dust one. I thought it was in here. I have a lot of plant brushes. I don't think plants would fit this one though. Give her a donut. <laughs> I don't feel like drawing a donut. Where is my dust brush? It's called dust in the wind. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Th those are big ones, but they get smaller. And there's some like little stuff there too. Eh, it looks kind of like she's in a video game or something. Um, what else? I don't know. I could add some light streaks on there. Make it like this green. Ooh, kind of strong, but no. Don't know why that would be there, but it is. Nice.
It, may, it might need something in the very foreground, too. Let's see if I can find something to put in the foreground. What's that? Some blobs. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. That's kind of big. Can also blur them. <laughs> you think it's good? <laughs> uh. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, alright. That's probably fine. It's good enough. Good enough for cringe. Yeah, so, wow. It's already almost two hours. Let me sign it. It'll be on my Instagram. And it's too small. And this is my signature, by the way, in case you're wondering. And if you're asking if it's similar to the religious symbol, yes and no. I'm not trying to copy the religious symbol. But I kind of am. Um, yeah, don't take that as offensive. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that's it. This looks about it. Hopefully I can figure out how to turn this off. And then this will be on my, my stuff. Um, yeah, so... Yeah. Like and subscribe to my channel, even though I don't post that much. I'll try to post more. Um, hopefully, like some other stuff. Like, um, I don't know, like video essays or something I could do. Um, obviously, when I make more, s <laughs> more stuff. Yeah, two hours of us talking. When I make more stuff, I'll put it up. Um, I do actually have more stuff than I put up, but I might enter it in festivals, so I could, I might just put, like, a trailer up when I finish it. Um, because they don't like it when you have it just free online, the entire thing. Um, but once, if it gets into anything, once it's shown there, I'll put it up. Um, and yeah. Yeah, my Instagram is probably the thing I use the most. So check it out there. Links are all um, on this video and everywhere else. So yeah. See you next time.